What do we have here? A custom? I don't mean some knife made in a factory that was customized by somebody, um, like I do a lot. This is a full custom, meaning it was built from scratch, milled by hand from hunks of titanium steel and, you know, like other weird materials that they use. These particular customs were made by Melvin A. Lozada. He makes these beautiful customs out of a shop that happens to be right near me. So when I found this out, I had to try to get in touch with him and uh, see if I could come over and see his stuff and see his shop. He graciously agreed to let me film and ask a few questions. So I'm here with Melvin Lozada. How's it going, Melvin? Everything's doing all right. I'm very thankful that you uh, invited me to check out your shop and your awesome stuff. And we were just looking at one of your machines over here, and it was freaking me out because it moved. I never seen a machine that was so easy to adjust. And you made that? Yeah, that was basically uh, a design between a, a fellow knife maker, Reese Weiland, and myself. And uh, we were trying to find a way of build a machine that we can profile and get accuracy all the time and we don't have to be changing or changing parts. When Melvin came to Florida in 2003, he began working with Reese Wayland. Um, he was a well-known knife maker from the area. This is one of uh, Reese's creations here. Eventually, Melvin went off on his own and started creating his own designs and building his own knives like these here. Okay. So and it you, always keeps a 90 between your, your keep, table and your belt. Yeah, 90 between the rest and the belt and the wheels and the rest. Okay. So everything is 90 degrees. And that's so you can actually make some curved areas too as, you, yeah. as it comes if, around the corner? If I'm contouring a knife in the back, I can run it a little bit out and it will give me a 90 degree uh, area right here in the front. To and make that's the for choils. smaller... Choils, the choils, okay. and I can rotate. That's it. where your choil is, right there. Yeah. Okay. So I can work with the small wheel. That's and amazing. And I have a bit, a more stiff angle. Right that is here. so cool. So all you do is just, you just keep a little, you keep a wrench in there. And my little wrench is a little red, awesome. redneck building, basically. Uh, the machine was built with part from another machine's. <laughs> basically, it's a Frankenstein, but it works. Well, it's amazing. It, it does Very its job. Cool. Very cool. I love it. I want, I want you to build me one now. <laughs> um, now, what do you use this one for? This one is mostly profile. Uh, okay. And uh, when I'm contouring my handles. Um, contouring handles, I, okay. I cut all my pieces by hand. I cut it in the uh, bandsaw. Okay. Uh, cut it really close to my lines. And uh, then right here. Touching also up. Finishing up. 90 degrees. And I do all the finishing up to get a part uh, ready gotcha. to start drilling and start putting together. All right. And this one this is one for... Right here is my main grinder. This and this one's for blade... This is the one I grind my bevels. Okay. Most of my bevels I grind right here, of course, with a bigger wheel. This right now has a small wheel because I was doing clips. The top part okay. of the blade. Gotcha. So, so, oh, really that, you said this was the wheel that's for the, your hollow grinds. That's the wheel for the hollow grind. Yeah, right. It's a 10 so, inch wheel, so, so you just unbolt that sucker and put this guy on there. And base, really simple. You just take the blade, the belt out. Take Easy the as that. Attachment out, and the other attachment come back. Very nice. That is super cool. And basically tied it with my belt. Uh, right now, all I'm doing is uh, profiling work around and grinding some little screws here and there. So I, I have an old belt on it, but normally, you know, every time I do a blade, I just go with a fresh belt. You, you use the belts like they're free. Someone said that I heard. Yes. Uh, because if you don't, you'll be wasting time, burning stuff. Like Most of the time what you're doing is, is uh, getting scratches from one grit to another. Right. Uh, if that belt has a little bit of wear, in one side and not so much wear in the other, okay. then you're creating deeper scratches than on one side and another Ooh. that you don't see. And then you got to deal with that later. To the other, to the other grid, basically you're passing those scratches. You know, you need, you want something. Then that you either got to, then you either got to go back or take twice as long with the with the higher grit. 
Yep. Something like that. And normally what I do is I, after I finish my blades, I sand them by hand. So anyway, if there's a scratch, if there's something like that, I take it up by hand. Very a, cool. A little bit more work, but it is. It's, it's the fun of handmaking. I'm going to pull over here and look at a couple of these blades. What kind of blades do we have here? Those are, uh, it's a knife called the Ghost. I um, saw the Ghost. That was the one I was looking at. Um, yeah, that that special knife is uh, for a company called Teams, Team Jeans. They're located in California. And they uh, made an, a batch of uh, 22 of them. Uh, t uh, basically 20 and then they are two which is those two knives right there and uh, they're semi blades uh, titanium handles it's hard to see that semi on the uh, yeah very the because video. they already there sanded goes, but you can goes. see yeah there you go you can yeah. see the the pattern the pattern will come oh, out and what are the two steels in the, in this one that's armor core steel is uh chan nico boomerang armor core steel okay and chad nichols makes that billet and you get it yes and then you chad can nichols make, make the billets and i uh, order whatever i need uh he makes special orders if you need to and then you get the billet you cut it and you work it out those specific uh blades they don't drill by hand easily you have to use carbide because they will break your bits do you get your blades heat treated already yeah Actually, I... Oh, you heat treat it. Right before they, you, you get a what heat treating, you have this little kiln. Uh, basically, this is for doing smelting um, gold, okay. uh, silver. But you use it to heat treat? I use it to heat treat. It goes to 2200 degrees. Okay. And it holds uh, the temperature for the time I need it. Now, I noticed that there was some heat coming from this guy. Yeah. Are we tempering right now? Tempering We're right tempering now. right now. We actually have a little oven right here. I had two blades cooking right Two in. blades in there that are getting rid of some of their stresses so mm -hmm. they don't uh, do something dumb and break, right? Yep. There's two Damascus blades in there. That's amazing. I just did before, before you got here. <laughs> it was cut on a CNC, which you don't do much of. This is a... Uh, almost kind of a rare thing for you to do it on the CNC. Yes, this uh, is when I have customers that they want like big rounds of one knife, you know, 10, oh, okay. 20 pieces. That makes sense. Yeah. Then I so you, can, uh, you can cut multiples of the exact same shape and size. Exactly. I use a friend uh, here that is, he's local. He has a CNC. We do the CAD, we do the CAM and uh, we cut the parts. But as you see, you know, there's a, uh, this is just, there's a whole bunch of stuff more to do in yep. this knife. You know, it's not even close. Yeah, really, the CNC did the boring part. Basically, you. it just cut and drill, basically. This is the same knife, but this is your handmade version of that same knife. And so whoever wanted all those other ones saw this one and said, I want a bunch of those or something exactly. like that. Okay. Exactly. Now, this is a, I wouldn't call it a liner lock. It's a liner lock. I guess it's a liner lock, but. It's a liner lock. It's, uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, I had to do the, all the, uh, profiling do the ex exposure and the spine right here in the back right uh, i have to do all the things what is the uh does uh westinghouse micarta westinghouse micarta wow very nice nothing but the best yeah the pivots are uh timascus pivots are timascus ladies uh norris stainless damascus okay Mike so norris. so once this gets etched it's going to show it's going to show some yeah. some beautiful stuff i can't see it at all yeah, you just sand it so fine that you basically cannot yep. see it. So when this gets uh, dropped in some acid, it will show the two different steels. Yep. And it will look really, really cool. Yeah, we could use, uh, sometimes we use uh, just muriatic acid or uh, pool, the pool stuff, muriatic acid. Okay, or right. Sometimes we use uh, ferric chloride. Ferric chloride, okay. De depending on, the, on, on what finish you want. If you want something more like dark, Mm -hmm. I use the ferric chloride. Because the ferric chloride darkens the steel. Darkens yep. the steel. If you want something more shiny, but still with pattern, then we go to the muriatic acid. Okay. Muriatic acid leave you a little bit more shiny. Right, I wanted to ask you about these pivots. You said that you used to buy the pivots, right? I used to buy pivots. From used to buy pivots, but nowadays, now they, you I'm, got... I'm making them myself. I just... You got these, you got uh, pivot collars, you got pivots... Uh, all titanium or stainless or whatever you need, right? And you're making them yourself right here on the lathe. That is a lot of work. Yeah, it takes a lot of time, a lot of precision. <laughs> and how many do you ruin? 
Oh, uh, to, to get one good one, do you ruin two or yeah. only ruin half of one, maybe Plenty. or something? Oh, once I got the the, 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 the rhythm going and I, and I get the, the you know the cutters in position and everything, uh, maybe I ruin one or two in the process. But okay, once, I'm making a batch. Yeah, once, okay. once uh, I got everything, it's really easy. It's just to follow, basically, and repeatable. Just put a piece of stock, cut, cut it, repeat. Threads. just takes time after yeah, it that just, it just takes time and time is kind of what i'm running out of here at over 11 minutes already and i'm only like halfway through the video i got from melvin's shop so we're gonna do we're gonna come back for a part two and just to get your uh to wet your lips a little bit here's what is going to be in in part two knives and also where he shows his stuff and how to get some of his stuff here what is this one this is one of my old really old models okay um boy that is a tank huh yeah the blade is made out of uh alabama damascus we have here this one is a lefty he's that a, is a lefty and that's a beautiful orange peel looking texture on there huh a titanium orange peel all right is it a secret how do you get that orange peel actually very uh, blade shows do you go to i go to blade show in atlanta the that's big one a, Normally, uh, uh, the beginning of June is uh, actually the biggest knife. Yeah, that's all you get for now. So, stop back in when I get the next one up. You'll get the rest of Melvin's background, some more of his knives. Maybe you'll even find out prices and how to get one. Um, he does some amazing stuff. and I, I, I was so surprised to find out there was someone of his caliber who was just right around the corner from my house, basically. So, check back in. Have a nice day.